Today, it's all about variable bypass flow over vaporizers. That means halothane, isoflurane, and sevoflurane. We will touch desflurane in later episode because the mechanics of that particular inhalational are quite different. Let's begin then. So what are these vaporizers in an anesthesia machine? It is a device that adds precise concentration of inhalational vapor into the fresh gas flow coming from the flow meters. This process can be accomplished in three ways. Number one, the flow over system. Let's have oxygen flowing over the vapor liquid chamber on its way towards the patient circuit, right? In last episode, we said the vapor pressure is air liquid surface property. So the more you expose the liquid surface to flow, the more vapor generated. Like after rainfall, the water on roadside dries up faster in windy environment, right? The saturated vapor state is achieved where molecules going out as vapors equal the molecules falling back inside. But when we introduce the chamber to continuous inflow of fresh gas, the flow would push the saturated vapor out towards exit and into the final mixture going to the patient circuit. In other words, the chamber is no longer saturated now at that particular temperature, right? So more liquid molecules would jump out of liquid state into the air as vapor to achieve saturated vapor pressure again, right? And more gas inflow would again push that saturated vapor out and the cycle is on repeat until no liquid remains in chamber. So the liquid is getting consumed by flow over of gases. This is the principle of flow over vaporization. Another way to vaporize liquid into a gas is via bubble through method which is called bubble through vaporizer. But in case of blue color coded desflurane, its boiling point is 22.8 degrees Celsius. So it practically boils at room temperature. That would mean that if exposed in flow over style vaporizers, the saturated vapor pressure would be 100% of the total 760 millimeters of mercury, meaning an overdose is going into the patient circuit. So desflurane is contained in a special type of vaporizer where fresh gas flow is going in a separate line and a fixed concentration of desflurane can then be sprayed into the gas mixture before it reaches the patient circuit. So this is called spray or injection vaporizer. The fourth kind of vaporizer is the measured flow vaporizer which is obsolete now used before in halothane copper kettle type. So let's come now to flow over vaporizer. Now this is the basic working design of flow over vaporizers. Different machines have different map but the basic principle of variable bypass are the same. It has got two main chambers, the bypass chamber and the vaporization chamber. A liquid filling cap through which we fill in the liquid inhalational and an indicator level of liquid in the vapor chamber shown outside. So through inlet when the fresh gas flow enters, the main flow goes untouched through the bypass track while a fraction of flow enters into the vapor chamber gets saturated with inhalational vapor as it flows over the liquid and later this saturated vapor and gas mixture meet at the main bypass flow to become final product entering the patient circuit. We can also see the concentration dial above through which we can set dial on specific volume percentage of vapor we desire in final output in volume percentage form. The wick are good with maintaining the temperature by gathering up heat from surroundings. And lastly, the temperature compensating cone or bimetallic strip that essentially helps in temperature compensation. We will discuss in detail these parts as we move along. So let's fill in the vapor chamber now with liquid sevoflurane. As you can see in the video, one safety feature is that you can't fix in iso liquid into the sevoflurane port. Every port is gas specific. So now the vapor chamber is filled with yellow color coded liquid sevoflurane ready for action. Suppose now a 2 liter per minute oxygen flow from flow meter enters into the vaporizer. The vaporizer is fully closed at the moment. So now the whole 2 liters per minute flow of oxygen will go through the bypass track without splitting up and out through the outlet into the patient circuit. Now if I set the concentration dial to 2% meaning I want 2% vaporizer concentration in the final output at outlet. The dial would divert an agent specific ratio of gas down the pressure compensatory labyrinth and into the vapor chamber to be 100% saturated with vapor. As this flow passes over the sevoflurane liquid at 20 degrees Celsius, it would fill up with saturated vapor, which as we discussed in start of video, the flow would be pushed along and through the exit of vapor chamber, 
where it finally mixes up with the main flow before outlet. So you see to enforce a concentration of 2% a very specific amount of flow is splitting up that is of course dependent on what fluid inhalation are we dealing with. Now we said in previous video the temperature of remaining liquid can fall after vaporization pulls away the energies and heat from surroundings. This would then drop the amount of vapor too, right? But these vaporizers keep the vapor concentration stable by keeping the temperature constant at 20 degrees Celsius and also through the bimetallic strip which alters the amount of fluid flowing over the liquid surface. Since we said in the start of video, greater the flow, greater the vaporization, right? So if temperature cools, the bimetallic strip or cone cools too and changes its position upwards creating a resistance to bypass flow. This will cause back pressure and divert more flow through the vaporizer chamber path and compensate for any drop in vapor due to decreased temperature. The opposite occurs if temperature of the chamber increases. So now you see since concentration dial and temperature bimetallic strip determine the splitting ratio at inlet, the bypass flow changes. So it is called variable bypass. Second, the serpentine labyrinth serves as pressure compensator. Now remember by pressure compensation it doesn't mean compensating to the atmospheric pressure in ambience. This is one confusion we always get. It basically means the change in pressure at the inlet of vaporizer and the back pressures generated by the pumping effect which may change the vapor output, right? How it does that we will see at the end of the video. Next, we know now that the saturated vapor pressure at 20 degrees Celsius is different for different gases. So naturally the amount of flow to be diverted by splitting and concentration dial should also be different. So every vaporizer is agent specific. And fourthly, the temperature compensation being done by changing the bypass and vaporizer flow ratios. So temperature regulated. So overall, the full name is agent specific, variable bypass, temperature and pressure compensated flow over vaporizer. The splitting ratio is the ratio of bypass flow to vaporizer chamber flow and that is directed by the concentration dial settings and since it is agent specific so a diversion is also different for different gases. For silver fluorine specifically at 1% setting the main flow is split into 25 parts of bypass track to one part of vaporizing chamber. At 2% now more flow would be directed to vaporizer chamber to generate more vapor. So it is 12 parts to one part of vaporizer chamber. At 3% the splitting ratio becomes 8 ratio 1. So let's calculate now how much liquid sevoflurane is being consumed if concentration dial is let's say set to deliver 2% sevoflurane in fresh gas flow of 2 liters per minute. We know the splitting ratio is 12 ratio 1 at 2% for sevoflurane. So now the flow going through the vaporizing chamber would be 12th of the total flow inlet, right? So 2000 ml divided by 12 is 160 ml. So vaporizer has now split the 2000 ml per minute fresh gas flow into 160 ml going into the vaporizing chamber and remaining 1840 ml will go to the bypass track. Recall how in last episode we discussed this again and again. So in vaporizing chamber containing sevoflurane liquid, you send in 160 ml of pure oxygen. Now at 20 degrees Celsius, saturated vapor pressure generated by sevo is 160 millimeters of mercury. So in terms of volume concentration, how much sevo added now to this 160 ml of oxygen at sea level? 160 divided by 760 millimeters of mercury. So 21% contribution by sevoflurane at saturated vapor pressure of 20 degrees Celsius. So remaining contribution would be by oxygen at 79%. To calculate now how much flow of sevo vapor is going outwards at exit chamber, you must remember this equation. So total flow divided by oxygen contribution of 79% equals x times the sevo outflow divided by sevo contribution of 21%. Now rearranging the equation and adding the values in fractions the flow out of sevo vapor is then how much? 42 ml per minute at 2% concentration dial. So to sum up, we have initial input of flow meter at 2000 ml per minute of pure oxygen. The bypass track at 
this splitting ratio of 2% concentration was 1840 ml per minute. Vaporizer chamber flow of oxygen was 160 ml per minute. And how much CO vapor added to this net flow? 42 ml per minute. So at outlet, we now have 2000 ml plus 42 ml, so 2042 ml at output, right? So if you see the concentration of CO now in total output towards patient, 42 divided by 2042 turns out to be 2%. So you see the same output as you set on the concentration dial. So basically, by altering the splitting ratio, and of course, depending on saturated vapor pressure of a specific gas, the vaporizer controls the output concentration of vapor to be delivered to the patient. Done. Now this 42 ml per minute is the CO vapor. But the question in the start was how much liquid CO is being consumed at this rate of concentration dial setting and flow. 1 ml of inhalational liquid generates 210 ml of vapor form. So 42 ml of vapor divided by 210 makes 0.2 ml liquid per minute or in other words 12 ml of liquid CO consumed per hour at 2% concentration dial and flow input of 2 liters per minute. The final section is about the factors that can affect the bypass vaporizers. So the vapor output is quite stable between the fresh gas flow rate of 250 ml per minute to 15 liters per minute. Beyond these points, the concentration decreases. At lower flows, there is not enough energy to push the vaporizer towards outlet. At higher flows, concentration decreases due to rapid cooling. Flow over vaporizers are very stable in their output between 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Pumping effect happens during positive pressure ventilation. Now, during positive inspiratory phase of cycle, the back pressure directs the saturated vapor in reverse fashion through the labyrinth and into the bypass track. When pressure suddenly drops then on expiration, the flow from bypass track moves forward and into the patient. So greater than set dial settings is delivered to the patient. To counter this phenomena, a check valve prevents back pressure from being transmitted towards the vaporizer during inspiratory phase. Also, we said that the labyrinth is pressure compensatory. How? Spiral serpentine form of labyrinth extends the distance that back flow has to cover during inspiration to reach the bypass track. So by the time it is still moving back through the spirals, inspiration cycle ends and expiration starts. The third safety feature for this is the vapor chamber are relatively small. The smaller the chamber, the smaller would be the volume of saturated vapor tracing back into the bypass and smaller would be the impact on patient. Next factor is of carrier gas. Let's say now in fresh gas entering the vapor, I add nitrous oxide. Now nitrous oxide is soluble in halogenated liquids. So initially the nitrous entering into the vapor chamber would start to dissolve in CO liquid. So total output of gas moving out of the vapor would reduce. Lesser the volume going out, lesser would be its impact in final mixture for the patient. So the concentration of inhalational in final mixture would initially reduce then the dialed setting. So if I am giving 100% oxygen and the red line is halothane concentration in final output, now adding nitrous to oxygen, the concentration of halothane would drop initially because nitrous is dissolving in liquid halothane until it reaches the saturation solubility in liquid. Beyond this point then, no more nitrous would dissolve in liquid form. So the incoming nitrous would make part of the outgoing volume and halothane total concentration would then rise. However, it would still be slightly less than the dialed setting. This is why I don't open the nitrous oxide during pre-intubation period. Although MAC values are additive, I would rather that the CO reaches good brain partial pressures quicker so I can intubate in deeper planes. Once intubated and deep, then I would open the nitrous oxide. The impact of high altitude we have already covered in the previous episode in detail. So coming up next, the desflurane vaporizers. Stay tuned.